bike transportation in the city is uh, just starting to really catch on. I know in other cities like uh, Portland, Oregon, and in Austin, Texas, like everyone is riding their bikes everywhere. But uh, in the city I live in, um, you know, it's kind of just starting to catch on. Some guys have like fixed gear bikes and road bikes and, uh, you know, they cruise around to work or for exercise or whatever. But uh, it's just kind of starting to catch on on the East Coast. I live in Melbourne and it's a fairly large city in Australia. And uh, yeah, bike riding's awesome. It's the easiest way to get around the city. You got the rivers that run through the, the middle of the Melbourne uh, Melbourne area. It's, it's awesome, lots of parks and stuff. Bike riding is amazing. Yeah, I live in a somewhat small town. There's only about 120,000 people, so the bike scene is, is definitely there, and we have some bike lanes here and there. We have like a real nice park with a, a trail to ride on and stuff. So it is quite friendly to the bikes, but uh, it's not a real, real big scene, so it, it works out for everybody. Yeah, I mean, Redlands is a great town for bikes. There's a lot of bike riders there, a lot of BMX kids. Um, yeah, it's a good town. It's, uh, it's fun. I like it. I grew up there, grew up riding, and it's great. I mean, traffic is always an issue, you know, you got to just be careful and stay out of the way of the cars and assume that they're going to hit you, you know, if you don't stay out of their way, so. I think anywhere you go, you're going to have accidents, but, you know, in, in Melbourne, like, everybody just tries to, you know, follow the rules and, you know, and that's the easiest way not to get hurt is just to make sure you're aware of everything going on around you and follow the rules. I, I definitely think the biggest way for bikes to get along with cars and, and buses and, and all kinds of other traffic is literally to obey the same rules. I mean. Technically, bikes are supposed to have the same rules as, as traffic, you know, stoplights, stop signs, all that stuff in the roads. Um, and it works out if you do it that way. You just got to be real careful and watch your back because a lot of cars don't pay attention. Just being aware of everything, you know. The bike riders need to be aware of the automobiles and the automobile drivers need to be aware of the bike riders. The most important thing for cars and bikes to coexist is drivers to pay more attention because people driving cars, you know, they, they don't look out for bikes. They look out for other cars, and they need to pay more attention. Bike riders need to be more careful, too. You just got to be defensive all the time, assume that, you know, they're not paying attention, and hopefully you'll be all right. Traffic is more dangerous than the mega ramp because there's a whole lot of options, like different, you know, variables that aren't there with this. It's a very controlled ramp. We're in control of how fast we go and everything we do. And you know, if something's going wrong, we can get away. You know, if, if a car plows you over, <laughs> it's probably more dangerous to ride your bike in New York City. I feel like you're more. Whoo, that was big. I feel like you're more likely to still get hit by a car with the rates that car accidents are set for. You're probably more likely to get hit by a car on your bike than, you know, messing up on this. I mean, it depends on how often you ride in New York or LA, but Mega Ramp is pretty scary. Riding downtown in New York City is pretty scary too, so I don't know. I think sometimes walking around in a big city. But it, it, everything has its risk, you know, so I mean, I've been hit by a car and, and I've crashed on this and I don't like either but I'd rather crash on this.